<laughs> Once we done, when we finished the program, Google, they gave us a case study, okay? Yeah. So they gave us uh, 18 CSV files to do data analy a data analyst project. Uh, for me, I had a project with a small company it's called Bellabit. And we were is a tech company. They build smart wa smart watches for their customers, and then they have the data. Um, so we were able to download those data to Kaggle, and then you play with the CSV, do you know, try to you know, using SQL or, and also we learn all programming language, try to join those databases, all of that. So, as you know, a lot of people didn't don't have a bag, technical background using data analysis, math. Um, so for me, it was kind of easier because it was like a refresher. But what I did was when I, when I, when I finished my case study, I also, I also got inspiration from other people who did the program because other people did the program. They put, they, you know, some of them shared their, their notebook on Kaggle. So I was able to, to work, uh, look at three, four notebooks and then, and then get inspiration and do my own. And once I'm done, I wrote my notebook as well. I, make a, I made a YouTube video explaining my notebook and then I put it, Put it online for free and that video has like twenty four thousand views nice and all of these twenty four thousand views people they're taking the google program so every day every day someone is texting me hey thank you i did it thank you uh, for putting that or sometimes they didn't understand something hey um why did you use that method why did you do that what why did you do that you know um of course it's not i always tell them hey i want you to do better just I get inspiration from other people to from other people to create this, but hopefully you can get inspiration for from that and make a better case study, right? You can teach me something maybe I didn't know. Um, but even for me right now, if I want to go back review that, I can go back review my own notebook and still remember a lot of things I did, you know, a couple months ago, you know, because it's just right there. Right, and it's also interesting. Speaking of that, well, when I when I was applying for uh, Amazon Technical Academy, I know we're not quite there yet, but I found that there were very little, very little on YouTube about it. Like it's hard to find people's yeah. experience. Like yeah. the, the most you'll ever find if you try to search for Amazon Technical Academy is you'll find a video where it's, it's you'll see five videos, they're all the same. Just a guy takes a camera, puts it next to his alarm clock, and then goes back to bed. Which so that he could show the alarm going off, and then he, <laughs> and he puts the camera by the coffee, and you know drinks the coffee, and you know that's the whole video. Like, oh, this is this is my life as a software engineer. I wake up, I drink some coffee, and then I go to work, and then I come home. Bye. Thanks for watching. Yeah. So I I thought if I made some videos with a little more insight yeah. about the academy, even though I haven't started it yet, I thought maybe I can attract more people to the channel by finding something that. People definitely want to see, but there just isn't, there isn't anything on it yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. Your video like, what is it really like? What is it really like to be a software engineer at Amazon? Yeah. According to YouTube, we have no idea. No, that's true. So, no, that's true. No one is doing it. And uh, it takes a lot of work because it's not easy, as you know, to make videos, you know, writing the scripts, you know, filming, editing, putting out. So it has to be someone who's really passionate about teaching, help, teaching people, sharing knowledge um you know to do that and also uh i saw on your videos you're using uh, lit code you know some those lit code problems um that's really good what you're doing because those problems are really hard to solve <laughs> some of them <laughs> yeah that that site was really intimidating for me yeah. when i first started working on it even the easy problems i just had i couldn't figure out what to do i didn't I didn't have any of the techniques. I just, I didn't know nearly enough. Even having my basics, I knew, I knew the basics of programming, but I had no idea how to actually solve a problem. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of what you do in your real job as a software engineer is problem solving. Yes. So I had to start learning those techniques. So what I did, I started watching other people's videos mm -hmm. to try to get the techniques down mm -hmm. and the thing about a lot of these videos are people they're coding on the fly like they just turn they just turn their screen on and just start coding mm -hmm. and they're they're kind of talking as they go but they're not really teaching yeah so i thought well i used to be a teacher so i can probably take this one step further now that i'm getting better at lead code i mean i'm not great at it by any means 
But now that I'm getting better and I can actually solve, I can solve any easy problem. I can solve most of the mediums and I can even solve some of the hards now. Mm -hmm. So I thought, why don't I start making like actual, you know, high quality videos explaining these concepts and how to actually solve the problem, like how the algorithm works, do it visually, and then actually show how it's done with code. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that would really work out for people who were like me that when they were, when they're starting out, hopefully they'll see my videos and say, well, wow, this guy's actually explaining how to do this. I, I, I actually get it now. Yeah. And so then they can go on with their uh, computer science careers the way that I kind of stumbled upon mine. Yeah. Uh, thank you for doing those videos. That's really helpful. You know, as you know, lit code is very intimidating. Um, we can do for the most part, the easy, the, some of the medium problems. Um, I, I use it a lot for SQL. We yep. have a very good uh, problem there uh, that you can, you know, play, you know, you know, have your brain exercise on them. Um, sometimes and it, and it known, measures you too. It tells you how it tells you how you're doing against everyone else's code. That's correct. That's correct. As you know, sometimes uh, there's no one. There's different way to solve a problem. Some people, you know, sometimes they have their suggested solution. Some people come back say, "Hey, this one is better. Um, you can optimize the code this way." But having someone breaking it down in a video format, even if you don't do all the problems, but just the one you can solve and then put it out there for everyone to see, is still very, you know, valuable. No one, no, no one else is doing it. You know, <laughs> there's no other right. people doing it. You know. And another thing I thought of when I was trying when I'm starting to make my leak code tutorial videos and I'm going to start doing other other websites too like mm -hmm. code forces and advent of code which are some really brutal problems that I've been able to actually figure out somehow so I'm going to start making videos on them as well That's nice. but uh, one thing I found when I was first trying to use leak code videos on YouTube even though the explanations weren't great they were kind of a good way to get you started and then one thing I I noticed was that it really depends on what language you're doing them in too. Like you might find an okay explanation in Python, but then there's nothing about Java. So I wanted to write, I wanted to do my videos in a way that I can explain the algorithm and show it visually without needing to actually know any programming language. Okay. So that, so the whole first, you know, 75% of my videos on lead code don't even mention the programming language. It's just all about the algorithm itself and how to do it visually and how to, how to problem solve. And then I show the Java solution. But at that point, you can just shut it off because you understand the whole problem. You could solve it in any programming language. So at that point, you might as well just pause the video and go solve it in your favorite <laughs> language. You don't even have to do it in Java. Wow. That's so good. That's, wow. That's great. Yes. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. If you... You focus just on breaking down the problem and on the algorithmic level, you know, the language itself doesn't matter. You know, you can now go use, if you're doing C++, if you're doing C, Java, you know, you can just go write it down, the, you know, whatever you want. That's cool. Wow. And, you know, ultimately there are only maybe 20, 25 total possible techniques you can use mm -hmm. to solve a typical computer science problem. So once you know them all, it's just a matter of, seeing the problem and knowing which one to use. Just like with a word problem in math, yes. where once you know all the tools, it's just a matter of reading the problem and figuring out, okay, this is a division problem, yes. and then go from there. Yes.